Given the decline in energy costs, we would expect some reprieve in, in this morning's July inflation numbers. That being said, while any reprieve is certainly welcome for consumers, I, I do think that it's going to be less than expected, less than what the market's expecting with the monthly increase nearer three to four tenths of a percentage point rise and an annual pace then pushing closer to 9%. Now, yes, pump prices have come down off about 14% from last month, but other categories of costs have continued this upward, this relentless upward trend, particularly the OER, which stands for owner's equivalent rent or the shelter component that goes into the CPI. This has been rising at an average pace of half a percentage point. So when we look at the core, when we strip out those volatile components of food and energy, we do expect uh, prices to continue to rise at about 0.5, 0.6, keeping that core number, that annual pace, well over 6%. So a little bit of a mixed bag expected in this morning's report. And I guess, Lindsay, people will be wondering uh, what this will do to change the, the likely path of action from, from the Federal Reserve. And even though the press conference from the last meeting was interpreted as, as dovish, is that conclusion already quite a long way behind us, given the strong jobs number that we got on Friday? Well, for the market, investors have been very anxious to call a peak in inflation. And so any cooling in this morning's report is likely to perpetuate that notion and increase expectations for a more benign Fed. That being said, from the Fed's perspective, policymakers have been very clear that it's going to take several months of noticeable reprieve in prices to convince them that inflation is on a sustainable downward trend. So one data point certainly does not make a trend and should not be enough to convince the Fed that inflation will continue to retreat from here, really pegging the market and the Fed against each other. And whoever flinches first is, is going to determine the directional momentum of, of rates. Lindsay, to, to what extent will Europe's inflation outlook be infectious to the United States? We've seen over a number of recent announcements like the Bank of England uh, last week pushing back their uh, forecasts for when inflation is likely to actually peak and the numbers remaining incredibly high for quite a few months still. If that's the case, will the U.S. peak in inflation potentially be delayed also? Well, of course, we're a global economy. So certainly, as we talk about elevated prices on a global scale, that's going to filter down the pipeline into the U.S. And that reinforces the Fed's expectations that costs will remain elevated and the Fed needs to remain vigilant in its fight against inflation. Now, again, as I mentioned, investors seem to be ping-ponging between an expectation for 50 basis points versus 75 basis points next month. And any sign of cooling price pressures will tilt the market toward Towards the latter, that 50 basis point increase, the Fed is going to have to step up its rhetoric in order to convince the market that they will stay at this more aggressive pathway if they deem 75 basis points uh, appropriate in order to bring down price pressures. But again, with, with the headline number still near a four decade high, it, it's going to be very difficult for the Fed to pivot away from that more aggressive pathway without one, losing credibility with the market or two, potentially losing control of inflation expectations.